our moment. Your unborn great-grandchildren are going to ask you, what were you doing? October 20th, 2024, and you were in the room for the first black woman vice president of the United States. Would you make some noise and receive our fearless leader? A couple of days ago, Kamala Harris made her most brazen attack against Christians to date. Take a look. Donald Trump hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with, with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade, and they did as he intended. Oh, you guys are at the wrong rally. She received massive backlash about this because she's been on a disrespect to Christians tour. But what she did a few days later is she ran to the most accepting place in the country for a corrupt Democrat, the black church. <laughs> these people, these leaders at the black church have reduced themselves to being nothing but puppets for the Democrat party. And this institution of the black church, if you even want to call it that, it's been in decline for years, for decades, because the black church's role in the community is waning. Its influence is trash because of the way the church operates. And really, when you think about it, supporting Democrats while claiming to be a Christian, honestly, in today's day and age, is an oxymoron. But Kamala Harris and her team, her surrogates, they've been on a hot streak of disrespecting religious groups, especially Christians. And it's getting worse. Let's just look at this clip here from, what, two weeks ago, Gretchen Whitmer, the governor of Michigan, a Kamala surrogate, mocking the Catholic communion. Right after that, how did they follow up with that? Well, she told the uh, Catholics up there in New York City at the Al Smith dinner, no, I don't want to come see you. If I go up and show up with you Christians, what am I going to say to my LGBT, P people, my pro-abortion people? I can't be seen in public with you Christians. Immediately after that, she does a gag for them. She does a skit with a 60-year-old lady dressed up as a Catholic schoolgirl. Further disrespect. Now, let's take a look at Trump's response clip because that was shocking. What Kamala said to this man when he said, Jesus is Lord, you're at the wrong rally. My jaws dropped. I've seen Kamala engage in horrific practices. I've seen her say terrible things, but that just outright so brazen with it, crazy. Let's take a look at Trump. And if you want to know what is at stake for Christians in this race, just listen to what Kamala Harris had to say last week. You're at the wrong rally. And that's really what she meant. That's really what she meant. She's very destructive to religion. She's very destructive to Christianity. and very destructive to evangelicals and to the Catholic Church. But while Kamala says that people who believe in Jesus don't belong to her rallies, you have to remember that that's as loud as it can be. In fact, a lot of people said that would be disqualifying for her. That would be a disqualification. In our movement, we love Christians, we welcome believers, and we embrace followers of Jesus. And when we look at the black Christian values, the values of the black church, the traditional values anyway of the black church, and the fact that they've been voting Democrat for 50, 60 years at this point, there's some real conflict here because on one hand, the church preaches these religious values. If you look at the black church from a religious perspective, they're actually very conservative. But on the other hand, the members are voting Democrat, 90%. When you talk about the values of the black church family the sanctity of life being against premarital sex teaching their young people to take personal responsibility in their actions and the way their life goes when you're talking about male leadership prayer in school i can go on and on it's a lot of values that have been traditional for the black church but they're in complete conflict with the democrat party with the policies of the democrat party with the values of the democrat party but these church leaders, these preachers, these pastors, these women in the church, they want to be part of the club. So they completely sell themselves out to be accepted by the Democrat Party. 
And a lot of these problems in the black church are stemming from the fact that the church today is largely populated and ran by liberal women. And I remember not too long ago, black Christian Democrats actually still had some of those traditional church values, those religious values that black people have held on for probably centuries at this point. Let's look at this clip of a prominent Democrat talking about his fate. What I believe is, is that marriage is between a man and a woman. As far as why, what in your religious faith calls you to be against gay marriage? Well, what I believe in my faith is that uh, a man and a woman, uh, when they get married, uh, are performing something before God. Kamala was extremely disrespectful to Christians, mocking God openly with a smile on her face. And days after that, her campaign decided to try to clean it up by having her make an appearance at a black church in Atlanta. And she went to the church, received a very warm welcome. Not the type of welcome where all souls need savings. The church is going to bring in anybody who wants to come to God. No, it wasn't that type of welcome. It was a celebrity type welcome where they were starstruck and idolizing her. Let's take a listen to some of it. She gave a speech there probably 20 minutes or so and <laughs> didn't mention the name Jesus not one single time, but was receiving all types of praise and co-signing from the congregation over there. And her speech, let's just listen to it a little bit. Earliest stages of our lives had those moments where it has been revealed to us our power. And we should never let anyone take our power from us or in any way try to convince us we are powerless. It's just a bunch of buzzwords that mean absolutely nothing. Now, when we talk about the black church in Atlanta, the state of most black people in Atlanta, these people can't afford rent. These people are struggling to feed themselves. They can't afford the gas to go to work. Life is hard. Prices are high as hell, and she's not talking about a plan. If you're not going to talk about the name Jesus, could you at least elaborate on how you're going to help these people financially? What are your policies that are going to help these people? What about the hooligans? Because Atlanta black neighborhoods are filled with gangs and hooligans. Do you have any policies that are going to help clean up the streets to incentivize other businesses to come into these neighborhoods to invest? Oh, no. You have nothing to say. Just buzzwords and platitudes, and these fools... We're eating it up. <laughs> so the fact that these parishioners just sat there, first they invited this lady into their church to do this, to try to clean up her disrespect. They didn't try to teach her, preach to her, tell her she was wrong. They took no stance. They didn't hold firm into their beliefs at all. It brings into question how much they really care because they are completely refusing to stand firm in their beliefs because they want to hold firm to the Democrat Party. When it comes to the Bible versus Democrat rhetoric, Democrat Party policies, they're going to choose the Democrat policies every single time. And now that Kamala has made this church appearance, she's going to pretend that her disrespectful comments about Jesus never happened. And the black church is going to help her with this. But her attacks against Christians aren't anything new. She's been doing this for years. Even when she was a uh, California Attorney General, she was going after pro-life and pro-traditional marriage groups over there. When she was in the Senate, she tried to weaken the 1990s Do No Harm Act, which was designed to protect religions and has really helped Christians. When it comes to making Christian institutions do things like hire gay people, perform gay marriages, stuff like that. She went after that. Like she wanted the Catholic schools to hire gay ministers, hire gay staff members. Because she doesn't care about their religious views. Remember during the shutdown? The Democrat Party during the shutdown, really. The governors of the Democrat Party. They closed down the church. We're talking about freedom of religion. These people were out there in their cars trying to listen on the radio to the sermons. And a lot of people just didn't go all together. They just stopped going to church all together. The churches were closed. Liquor stores were open. Weed shops were open. Strip clubs were open. And this is the Democrat Party. <laughs> This is the party that the black church is in bed with. This is the party that Kamala Harris wants to be the leader of. But 
like I said, man, these people are nothing but puppets for the Democrat Party. They put up leaders like Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton. <laughs> I'm not even going to get into that. But let me know what you guys think about this. What was your initial reaction when you heard Kamala say you're at the wrong rally? You guys are at the wrong rally if you're saying Jesus is the Lord. Mm -hmm. What was your reaction when you saw her walk into that church and those people would be starstruck accepting her, hugging her? Oh, it's all good. Yeah, you disrespect Jesus. You go out to Christians, but we're going to pretend like none of that happens because we got a Democrat Party leader in our church. <laughs> what was your thoughts about all of that? Like, share, and subscribe if you want more honest conservative commentary. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.